Hi guys, uh, most of the paramotors out there are equipped with manual start, yet there are more and more paramotor manufacturers and engine manufacturers coming with electric starts. Let's discuss what is a better option for you. Welcome back to our Insights into Paramotor Geometry series. Thank you for your patience. After a long while, we are back with a few last videos left. Here's a list of all the engines I have owned and I have uh, flown. Well, basically, my first, my first unit was a dual start Simonini Nirvana 200cc. Then I went through all the way through mostly manual start engines, small cc, all the way up to 250, 235. And eventually, currently, I'm flying a Vitorazzi Monster Plus with a manual start. A part of that, I also tried and test flown a few other engines, uh, mostly manual, but also some electric. This will be my personal view based on my own experience, but I'm sure it will be useful for you as well. So on, on my previous list, I've mentioned a few types of manual starters, and there are basically three of them. Uh, it's the direct manual starter, soft manual starter, and the flash starter. There is a difference in the main construction and use. Basically, direct manual starters are used for engines without clutch, and soft manual starters and flash manu uh, manual starters are used for engines with clutch. Now, what's the difference? Well, the most simple one is the direct manual starter that is used uh, for engines without clutch. What it does, the rope is directly connected with the flywheel and the prop. So as you start pulling, you immediately from the very first moment feel the resistance of the engine and the weight of the flywheel piston and, uh, and the propeller. So with the soft manual starter, additional spring is added, which is way stronger. Uh, and if you, when you start pulling, this additional spring absorbs the initial impact, the initial motion, so you don't feel the resistance of the engine and the flywheel instantly. And uh, as you start pulling, it's more soft and smooth. With the flash starter is a bit more different because during the most of your motion, when you, when you pull the starter, you are not engaging the rotation of, uh, of the flywheel at all, but this uh, flash spring absorbs the energy of your pull. And once sufficient energy is, is absorbed, when there is a pretty high tension in, in the spring, it suddenly releases, it suddenly releases the power and the energy into the flywheel and gives the flywheel kind of a kick. Uh, away. Uh, so basically all the energy that you generate during the pull is released at the very end of the pull in a very short moment. And that means it gives a stronger kick and higher acceleration to the flywheel and to the engine. So your input is basically the same. You keep pulling the cord, but the outcome is different. With the direct manual starter for engines without clutch, a lot of your energy that you apply on the starter is, is consumed by accelerating the prop. That means you roughly only reach about 1,200 RPM according to our measurements during the actual starting procedure. Now with a soft starter for engines with clutch, uh, you don't engage the motion of the prop, so all of your energy is applied to the flywheel and the piston only. And during the starting procedure, uh, you actually reach uh, around 2,700, sometimes even more RPM uh, on, um, on for a very short moment. With the flash starter, uh, this is even enhanced because the, all the energy is released at the very end for a very short moment. But in that very short moment, 
the RPM of the engine increases uh, sometimes even above 3000. Now the starting efficiency is obviously the best for the flash starter and the soft manual starter. With these two starters you have higher probability to start the engines on the first or the second pull. A power needed, obviously you need to apply the most power with the direct manual starter without clutch because you need to apply because you need to accelerate the, the prop as well. While the prop is not moving during the starting procedure on engines with clutch, you don't need to apply that much energy uh, and uh, it's easier to start. Uh, simplicity, well, this is the, this is the simplest and for maintenance and, and failure. Uh, these soft starters are pretty good. Flash starters are known to be rather sensitive and need a bit more maintenance. Now, coming back to electric starter, well, I think it's obvious to everyone, the basic advantage is that it's more comfortable, convenient, just push the button and you're on. Some believe that it's more safe uh, because during the preparation for your takeoff, when you strap in, uh, when you hook in the glider, the engine is not uh, spinning. Mm, I don't think this is a big issue, especially with engines with clutch because with those engines the prop isn't spinning anyway. Electric starters are heavier because of the actual motor, electric motor and the battery and uh, also if the engine is equipped with uh, in-flight charging you have additional coil. They cause more trouble, there's just additional part to wear and, and break and obviously they are more expensive. Now at the beginning I, I, I named a list of engines that I have flown, most of them were manual starters. The question is, did I wish for electric starter? Uh, my personal opinion, my personal response is no. Well, I started with the Simonini 200cc dual start engine and yes, I use the electric all the time. Why would I pull the cord if I don't have to? But due to weight considerations and my back pain problems, I switched to manual starter engines to save some weight. And pretty much the only issue or the only engines that I had some issues and trouble starting them were the Polini 250 and the Black Bull 235. Now the Polini 250, yes, I would wish I had an electric starter for that, but on, that, on, on the other hand, I. I wouldn't order one because the engine is already heavy as much but uh, I wouldn't I, I just wouldn't want to add uh, any electric starter to it any weight so yes I continue to fight the manual starter maybe my engines were the, was a little bit tricky because I tested other Polini 250s and those were uh, those were slightly easier to start than my personal unit now the Corsair Blackpool 235, that was kind of a uh, uh, not so happy combination because it was a direct manual starter. So while, by pulling the cord, I engaged the motion of uh, the propeller, so there was no clutch. With the large displacements, I had to, it was pretty tough to to pull. Now. It's, it's not that I wouldn't have enough power, there was a slight difference, the, uh, the Black Bull required a slightly longer pull, so I had to reposition uh, the back pulley uh, on my starter rope so I can, I can have a longer pull. So I was able to apply sufficient force while having the motor on my back, but it was a just, just my hands a bit too short, which is tricky. But anyway, it was a good engine. Recently I have flown the Vitarati Monster Dual Start, which was a nice combo and the weight was acceptable, but I personally con considered this to be unnecessary. The Monster Plus manual starter is so easy to start that uh, uh, I just switched back to save the weight. 
For me personally, it wasn't much, uh, a lot of benefit. The other engines that I have tested, one interesting, uh, the only one that was pure electric starter was the F200 electric, which was good. Uh, and, but at the time when I've flown it, it was all right. But there were a few occasions where my friend stayed on the ground because his battery was empty and he didn't have any charger with him. There was one very special engine that was the Ixor rotary engine uh, with 60 horsepower but that was a very special racing uh, prototype adapted for paramotor use. That one only had uh, electric starter and I believe it wouldn't be impossible to start it with, uh, with manual starter, I don't know. Uh, but that was a one crazy unit for one crazy pilot. Greetings to Javi Malagita. One of the recent engines that I've tested was the Quattro 2, uh, was the EOS four-stroke with manual starter. Despite being four-stroke, despite being uh, a higher displacement, it was easy to start manual as well. No problem with that. My final conclusions are, uh, again, this is my personal view. Your might be different, but take this as my kind of advice. Uh, with the direct manual starter, without clutch, you would probably wish to have an electric starter. If you have electric only, you would probably wish to have it, have a dual starter. And if you have both, you will probably end up using the electric only but for most engines no for all engines up to 150 cc i believe electric starter is absolutely unnecessary for all engines up to 200 cc i don't think it's necessary it might be helpful uh, and it depends on your condition i myself i had back pain problems so i sacrificed the electric starter just to save some additional weight and above 200 cc i uh, wished i had electric starter but then again the those engines are already heavy uh, and i wouldn't i wouldn't add any other weight because of my back pain problems uh, there's one thing in the math called calculating the weight now adding the electric starter to a regular engine including the battery and, and the recharging coil, it's probably up to one kilogram. Uh, and, it does, and it doesn't seem to be much. And fact is, in normal flying conditions, with a regular paramotor adding one kilo, you, you don't really notice the big difference. But to me, when I was flying really heavy units or heavily loaded, full of gas, additional gas tank, and, and uh, some additional luggage for, for bivouac flying. Above a certain threshold, it seemed like every single kilo counts for two or three. So if you plan to fly a heavy engine and fully loaded, one kilo is not the same on a 30, 35 kilogram setup than on a 25 kilogram setup is not the same. Trust me, every kilo above a tra certain threshold counts as two. So guys, thanks for watching. In the next chapter of this series, we will discuss the fuel capacity. Uh, stay tuned, hit the subscribe button and see you soon.